Hi folks, HR Funk here with part two in my evaluation and tutorial of the Hilux Leatherwood M1000 Pro Rifle Scope. In part one of this series, I covered the basic specification and features of the M1000 Pro, and I also covered installation of the M1000 Pro on your rifle. In this segment, I'm going to cover calibration of the M1000 Pro's trajectory system for your rifle and your load. And this is one of the departures between the new art scopes and the original art scope as fielded back during the Vietnam War. The original scopes only had to be calibrated for the ammunition that the military used at that time, which was the 7.62 millimeter NATO cartridge. So in order to accomplish that, the cam on those original art scopes only had to compensate for trajectory at the range that the 7.62 millimeter cartridge was traveling when it was fired by those military snipers. Part of the innovation with the newer style M1000 Pro is the ability for this scope to be calibrated to any load that you might be using. The way that's done is by calibrating the trajectory ring with the trajectory cam in order to make sure that the scope is compensating properly for whatever the trajectory is of the load you're using from your rifle. And I'm going to cover this in some detail and we're going to take a look at what each of the rings on the M1000 Pro is responsible for doing. And I'm also going to set the M1000 Pro's calibration to the load that I'm using in this rifle. And I'll show you exactly how that's done. The first step in calibrating the trajectory system of the M1000 Pro to your rifle requires you to do some homework. And what I mean by that is you have to determine the trajectory of the bullet that you're firing from your rifle in order to achieve the proper setting of the trajectory cam. Now there are several different ways you can do that. One way is to go to the manufacturer's website for the bullet or ammunition that you're using. Most manufacturers publish trajectory data for their loads or their bullets, and that's a good starting point, but your own specific data may differ somewhat from your rifle. You can also use a trajectory app on your phone or on your computer and those typically allow you to plug in more variables to get a little bit more specific trajectory for your rifle and your load. The more specific you can get and the more data you can put in and the more variables you can eliminate, the closer you're going to be able to determine the trajectory of the bullet from your rifle. With this rifle, what I did was to go out and fire it with the load that I'm intending to use. And the load that I'm firing from this rifle is the military's M118 LR, the long range precision shooting, or long range precision ammunition rather, used by the military currently. And I suspected out of the 20 inch barrel of this rifle that I was going to get less velocity than the published data for that load. And I was correct. Out of this barrel, that M118 LR ammunition with the 175 grain Match King bullet is achieving a velocity of about 2580 feet per second. That's about 40 or 50 feet per second slower than I would be expecting with say a 24 inch barrel. So with that velocity information, I was able to input it into my ballistic app along with all the other data, including altitude and temperature and one thing and another to come up with the closest trajectory that I can for the bullet that I'm firing from this rifle. And that did make a difference. And although that 40 feet per second difference in velocity from the published data to what I'm seeing out of this rifle is not tremendous in terms of effectiveness. It is measurable and does have a slight impact on the trajectory of the bullet. In fact, what I noticed when I looked at the trajectory tables in the manuals for the M1000 Pro is that with that slight loss in velocity, the trajectory of the 175 grain Match King out of this rifle has a trajectory that's closer to the 168 grain 308 load that's published in those tables. So again, not a tremendous difference in terms of trajectory, but measurable, and I want to be as precise as I can when I set the trajectory for the system on this rifle. Once you've determined the trajectory of the load that you're using, the next step in the process is to consult the manuals from the M1000 Pro to determine what setting on the trajectory cam best lines up with the load that you're using. And one thing that I should have mentioned in part one of this series is the high quality of these manuals. If you look as I turn through, uh, and this is the quick start guide, you'll notice that 
there are very high quality photographs that are used as opposed to illustrations and at this point I've arrived at the trajectory tables and you'll notice I have a couple of them highlighted this one is the one that most closely matches my rifle with that 2580 feet per second velocity on the 175 grain match king bullet and if you look all the way over here you'll see that it has a setting and I'll try to get this so you can see it of 360 and it's important to remember and I'll show you on the trajectory cam exactly where that lines up and how that applies but you can see there are loads for many different cartridges and bullet weights in this table and again this is a starting point if you look here is the line right below the one I have highlighted for the 175 grain match king and again because of the slight loss in velocity with the bullet that I'm using from my rifle it does line up closer with the lighter 168 grain load again not tremendous but it is enough that I want to use the different setting now one other point that I should make right now is the M1000 Pro is not a pinpoint precision target scope that's not its purpose in life and I think some people have been a little bit disappointed over the years using the art scopes for that purpose and that's not what they're for what they're intended for is to get you on target very quickly compensate for any change in trajectory because of range automatically and allow you to fire a shot very quickly that is accurate enough to achieve your intended purpose so if you're hunting that means a shot that's accurate accurate enough to cleanly harvest whatever game animal that you are after so again when you look at the trajectory charts you might see slight deviations between your actual trajectory of your load and the trajectory that's listed in the chart so you're looking for the one that is close enough or as close as you can get to your specific rifle and your specific load but it might not be exactly the same at every single distance so now it's time to move on to actually setting the trajectory cam for my load on this m1000 pro and before i do that i want to go back over the individual rings and what each one of them do moving forward from the ocular lens the first ring we come to is the power and range ring and you see it has two sets of numbers there is a top number that is graduated in 100 yard increments and there is a bottom number the top number indicates the range the scope would be set at if we're using it in the auto ranging and trajectory mode and the bottom number indicates the magnification that's being used so currently we have the arrow lined up with the 6 and 600 mark indicating that if we were using this in auto ranging and trajectory mode we would be set to compensate for bullet drop at 600 yards and we would be using a magnification of 6 power moving forward the next ring is the trajectory ring and you see that it's marked with numbers and hash marks and these correspond with the settings that we saw in the manual a few minutes ago so for example that setting of 360 that I'm going to use with this rifle means that I come to the number 3 and then come over 6 hash marks and when I line that up I'm going to be lining it up with this arrow and you can see right now it's set for about 650 it looks like so I'm going to adjust this so the arrow lines up with the 360 marking in front of the trajectory ring and in fact where the arrow that I mentioned a moment ago is located is on the trajectory cam itself and this ring is cam shaped as the name implies and if you can see the small roller underneath the trajectory cam here that is what the cam bears against to raise and lower the rear of the scope to automatically compensate for trajectory of the bullet at varying ranges and this is computed to be accurate or calculated to calibrate with the markings on the range and power ring so that when you 
have everything calibrated properly if you turn the power and range ring to say the 400 yard marking it should have the trajectory ring or the trajectory cam in the proper location to raise the rear of the scope high enough to compensate for the bullet drop at that distance. And it's finally time to set the calibration ring to properly correspond to the load that I'm using in this rifle. As I said a while ago, I need to set the calibration ring to a setting of 360, meaning I need that to line up with the arrow on the trajectory cam. And the first thing I have to do, and I'm going to get my hands in the way somewhat here, I'll try to keep back enough that you can see what I'm doing. But the first thing I'm going to do is loosen both of these screws slightly. And the first one on the range ring, I'm now going to pull back. Now I'm going to loosen the screw on the trajectory cam, or excuse me, the trajectory ring. And with that screw loosened, you can see I can now turn the calibration and range rings independent of the trajectory cam. And I can line up the arrow with that 360 setting. There's the numeral three, there's the hash mark for five, and the hash mark for six. So it's now properly calibrated to that setting of 360. And the only thing I have to do at this point is tighten everything back down. And I'm probably gonna have to turn the camera off to do this because if I try to put my head down here so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to completely block the view. So give me just a couple of minutes to tighten everything back down. And that screw is now tightened back down. You can see I still have my setting of 360. And at this point, the power and range ring is still separated from the trajectory ring which is fine because I want to make another point while I have them in this orientation. As I said in part one, you can separate the power and range ring from the trajectory setting and thereby you can use any magnification you want at any distance you want. But in order for the trajectory compensation system to be all set together, the range ring and the trajectory ring have to be lined up right here. And there are pins in the front of the range ring that go into holes, and you might have heard that snap right there, go into holes on the rear of the trajectory ring. And when I tighten this back up, and I'm gonna tighten this one a little bit more too. That ensures that they're locked together, and now I'm in auto ranging and trajectory mode for this optic, my rifle, and my load. Currently, the arrow is lined up with the 500 yard marking, so I would be set based on the trajectory table and the data that I obtained from this rifle for a shot at 500 yards, and all I would have to do is essentially look through the scope, line up the shot, and squeeze the trigger. That's the beauty of the art system, and that's one way that it can be used if you're shooting at known distances. All you have to do is dial the scope to whatever the distance is you're shooting, aim, and squeeze the trigger. But there's another way, and I'm going to go over this when I talk about the reticle and using the reticle in the M1000 Pro, that if you're at an unknown distance, you can frame your target with the reticle, and that will automatically compensate for the drop at an unknown distance, and then, once again, all you have to do is aim and squeeze the trigger. By the way, this is one place where if I could make a suggestion to Hilux Leatherwood, it would be to come up with a system that would allow a quick release between the range ring and the calibration ring, so that you didn't need to use a screwdriver in order to separate those. That way, if you got down into position and you were at a known distance that you were watching and you wanted to separate that to change your magnification, you could do that quickly and easily. Or if you saw another target appear at a different distance and you didn't know the range, you could put it back together quickly, go right back into that auto ranging mode, frame aim and shoot your target at the unknown distance and do all of that without tools. Now at this point, you might be saying, okay, HR Funk, that's all well and good 
but what if I have a load that doesn't correspond to any of the cartridges that are in the quick start guide? That's when you default to the owner's manual and in the back of this manual there is a trajectory compensation setting or table for every single setting on the calibration ring. So all you have to do is go through these until you find the trajectory that matches up closest to the load that you're using and then apply that setting to your calibration ring and you're going to be set for that auto ranging and trajectory capability. The final step in the process of calibrating your M1000 Pro is to zero it. Once you have the proper calibration setting, the next step is to zero your rifle at a distance of 200 yards. For that process, you use the normal windage and elevation adjustment turrets and zero your rifle for that distance of 200 yards and ensure that you do so on the cam setting of 2 and 200. That way you'll be properly set when you start to compensate at longer distances to provide for the proper bullet drop at those distances. Once the 200 yard zero is established, the next step is to fine tune the settings on your M1000 Pro. What that means is to fire it at the various distances all the way back to the maximum distance that you intend to fire your system and make sure that the trajectory compensation is close enough at those distances. Now there is a rule for fine tuning the trajectory setting at those greater distances if it's off slightly. And that rule is hit high, go high, hit low, go low. What that means is if you're firing at a greater distance than where you zeroed and you're hitting higher than you want to at that distance, you should go slightly higher by one or two hash marks on your trajectory ring or your calibration ring. If you are hitting lower than you want to at those extended distances, then you need to go one or two hash marks lower on your calibration ring. And that will properly fine tune your rifle and your M1000 Pro for firing at those greater distances. Also, one thing that I learned when I was shooting at Bang Steel is if you can see your bullet impact and you see it hit a little bit low, simply turn the trajectory cam slightly higher as though you're compensating for a slightly greater distance and it's going to be right where you want it to hit. Similarly, if you see your shot hit a little bit high and you dial back slightly as though you were shooting at a slightly shorter distance, that will also automatically compensate for that. It's very quick and it becomes very intuitive after you do it a little bit. So that was one thing I learned just from working with, and that was in fact the older M1000, it was not the M1000 Pro. But it was something that I liked because you could make very quick, and as I said, with a little bit of practice, very precise adjustments, much quicker than going to your elevation turret and trying to click in the compensation for whatever correction you need at that extended range. And that's going to wrap things up for part two of my review and tutorial on the Hilux Leatherwood M1000 Pro Rifle Scope. In part three, we'll take a close-up look at the HR1 reticle used by the M1000 Pro and also take a look at the process to use that reticle to frame, aim, and shoot. And as I said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.